This time on Apocalypse Auto, we drive down to Stevensville, Montana to pick up this 1977 Pacero motorhome, try to avoid getting the hantavirus so that we can turn it into this rad car hauling SOB. Today we're driving from Missoula, Montana down to Stevensville, Montana to check out this motorhome we found on Craigslist for $850. The only problem is that it won't start, so we need to figure out if we can make this thing run so we can get it back to Missoula. That's like a horror movie house. I expect to see a ghost standing in the window. Mm -hmm. 850. All right. There's like an inner tube in there. <laughs> Do we get all the bicycles? <laughs> How's it going? I ain't no Taj Mahal, but for 850. Right. Well, for what we're gonna do. Yeah, I mean, we want to try to just make a car hauler out of it, so. It's got enough power. Yeah, it had the 440, right? Yeah, it's got the big block. Awesome. A lot easier because I got no way to tow this. <laughs> I didn't even stop to think that I'm trying to turn all these wires. Well, if I take all the wires off and turn them one notch over and put them all back on, right? It's the same as turning it that way. Awesome. Oh yeah. So as it turned out, the firing order was all wrong, and Shane had to mess with the distributor cap, but eventually, we got this thing purring like a kitten. Oh, we're pissing the horses off. Oh! Damn! 
Wow. We just scared everybody. Everybody. The All these horses hate us. All right, so after cleaning up the carburetor with some sea foam, we came back the next day and first order of business was to replace the starter, which we were quickly wearing out. And then after that, we just decided to bypass the gas tank and just put a five gallon gas can behind the passenger seat to run right into the carburetor because the old gas in these tanks is doing nothing but gumming up the carburetor. Well, I remember people asked me that in the beginning when we were starting this whole thing, they're like, so are you making vehicles to survive the apocalypse or vehicles like they were made in the apocalypse? Exactly. And at first I was like, well, vehicles to survive it. And then I realized, like, well, no, that's not really what we're doing. We <laughs> kind of are, but we're using scrap. Exactly. This is what it would be like making cars in the apocalypse because money doesn't exist. Hey, right. you came across the vehicle. Uh, you can't, like, yeah. the, it's been sitting for years, the tank's bad, well, you can just run this new line. Exactly. Yeah. Bypass that. Bypass that. Yes. In the apocalypse, when money doesn't exist, it's almost like you don't have any money, kind of like us. <laughs> when money is no option, you do what you can. <laughs> Let's see, we've done quite a bit for being broke ass. Yeah. And it's all red! <laughs> That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That sounds a lot better. Might as well. Let's see if it moves. So after a couple days of working on the Chrysler 440 in this Pace Aero motorhome, we got it running well enough where we could finally get it back home and move on to stage two of turning this motorhome into a flatbed car hauler. to fill up our five gallon gas can slash gas tank. We filled up the tires with some air because they're a little bit low and then we were on our way home. So first order of business was to pull out the generator because if we can get this thing running, it's worth more than the $550 we paid for this entire camper. So since we got the generator running and it produces power, we're going to make a frame for it so it'll fit in the hitch of any pickup truck. Beautiful. The beginning of our frame.
So after doing a little bit of stress testing on the frame we just built, make sure that it would hold the 450 pound generator. We put the generator up on its new frame and then it was time to move on to tearing down the camper. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, I'm losing it, I'm losing it. Okay. Oh, that was close. That was amazing. We figured the easiest way to attack this thing was to start from the top and work it. our way down. Got it. So Shane jumped up on the forklift, which is totally OSHA approved, and got to work. After loading all the garbage into the back of my blazer to take to the dump, we moved on to add a new frame to the inside of the camper so that it wouldn't just blow apart when we were driving down the interstate. Wow, you can really see how warped the... That's so bad. Oh, wow. Awesome. That is a hell of a lot straighter than it was. Oh, thank God. adding some lag bolts through all the 4x4s to make this thing nice and sturdy, it was time for a structure test. Shape test. Oh wow. Oh. So next thing on the agenda was to take this half a motorhome over to Wayne's shop so that we could start working on the flatbed. So after Wayne got all the C-channel measured up to specs, it was time to do some welding. Wayne looks like a spaceman.
So after all the welding was done, it was time to do some cutting. After backing this thing into the shop, Wayne prepared to cut a wedge out of the frame so that we could lower the back half of the flatbed closer to the ground to make it easier to actually load cars onto this thing. Wayne got done putting down some welds, we decided to see how good they were. <laughs> Shake your money maker, Wayne! Uh, Tyler's gonna break it now. Take what your mama gave you! Someone's gonna get hurt. <laughs> It'll probably be Tyler. Probably. After Wayne was done trying to break Shane's hand, cutting the old hitch off the back of the camper, all we had to do was install this wood to make the deck complete. It's not a trampoline, Wayne. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's still bouncy. That was epic. I'm glad I got that on film. Get up, get up, get down. Come on, jump, 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 jump. So the only problem was there was this big gaping hole in the back of the camper, and we figured since we were making this thing into a mobile garage and flatbed, what better to use than a garage door? So after locating our free garage door, all we had to do was go pick it up. So I was in charge of making the inside of the camper look more apocalyptic. So we decided to use some street signs and license plates. Of course, all the skulls and horns we could find. And then window armor on the outside. And while I was doing the important stuff, Wayne was working on cutting some wheel wells out of the wood so that the tires wouldn't rub. Then all we had to do was give this thing a good zombie paint job. Then all we needed to do was test out the flatbed, but I guess that'll be left for the next episode of Apocalypse Auto. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching.